Typography is one of the most important elements of web design. As web designers and developers, we're responsible for honoring the content and delivering it as clear as possible to our readers. And there are many things we need to consider in order for it to be effective. For example, when choosing a font, we might ask ourselves, does it convey the right message or mood? Does it work well with other fonts? Or is it legible? As we'll soon learn, typography is a critical tool for communication. And since our first responsibility is to our readers, we'll need to guide them so that they comfortably find and understand and connect with the information they seek. Text can be thought of as the user interface because users rely on it to accomplish whatever it is they're there to do. So it's a crucial part of the user experience and can ultimately influence whether or not our content is actually read. In this CSS Foundation's deep dive, we'll cover topics such as best practices for choosing a typeface, text layout techniques, and implementing responsive typography and vertical rhythm. We'll also explore font resources like the at font face rule, which allows us to include custom fonts, along with font loading guidelines and other detailed font features and techniques that will enhance our text. Jacob Nielsen, one of the world's leading experts on web usability, expressed that text is a user interface. It's a common mistake to think that only full-fledged graphical user interfaces count as interaction design and deserve usability attention. That statement holds so much truth because the purpose of typography should be to make life easier for our readers. It makes it possible for them to quickly scan text and entices them to engage with it so that it evokes emotion and makes them happy, just like an intuitive, well-designed graphical user interface would. Good typography is inviting, then enhances the message it presents, which in turn enhances the reader's attention. And while good typography makes all of this possible, bad typography can just as well make it impossible. A word can convey as much meaning as an image on the page because it describes a mood or emotion. That's why choosing an appropriate typeface is critical. When searching for the right typeface, first, read your content and determine the mood it conveys. Take a moment to describe this mood with adjectives. Is it elegant? Whimsical? Is it heroic or modern? Then, Find typefaces that you feel accurately describe these adjectives because it's important to be sure that it conveys the right feeling. Even if a typeface looks great, there's no point in using it if it's hard to read. Always go for easy to read because text is meant to be read. If it's difficult to read, people won't want to read it. That means staying away from many of the decorative fonts out there because text doesn't need to call attention to itself. Besides a good typeface, good typography also requires good legibility and readability. Legibility is more about how individual letters are distinguished from each other. It's more about the design of the typeface, like the strokes and the spaces in and around the letters. Legibility is maintained through clear and easy to read typefaces. We can't change how they look but it's up to us to choose the right one. So, what makes one typeface more legible than the other? Well, the most legible typefaces usually have many common features, like loose letter spacing, or generous X heights, which is the height of the main body of a lowercase letter, like our Y and our O here. And they also have similar cap heights, which is the height of the uppercase letter, like our T here. They also have prominent ascenders and descenders, which are the upward or downward vertical strokes on lowercase letters that extend above the X height or below. Ascenders extend above, while descenders are the ones that extend below. They also share common counters, which is the fully or partially enclosed space within letters. They also have open bowls, which are the curved strokes that encloses the letter's counter, and open apertures, 
which is an opening at the end of an open counter, like our H here. Legible typefaces also share common serifs, which are those little tapering strokes that tail the end of some letter forms. Next, let's go over ways legibility can be lost in a typeface. For example, if the text is set in all caps, the ascenders and descenders in the letters get lost. And if too much of the text is italicized, the spacing between letters starts to get lost as well. Finally, with too much use of a bold font weight, the bowls start to close up in the letters, as we can see here. When choosing a typeface, certain factors should influence which ones we choose. For example, the mood. What kind of feeling does it convey? Is it the right message? We tend to have emotional connotations with words and associate meanings to them. And typography has a lot to do with this. For example, words set in all caps tend to feel more powerful than words set in lowercase letters. Words set in a script typeface add a calm, elegant touch. A serif font can make a word seem more serious and sophisticated. Make sure the mood doesn't draw attention away from the content. Choose the one that seems to work best and remember that not one typeface can express every meaning in a word, so we'll need to find a balanced compromise. Aesthetics will also influence which typeface we use. Notice the fine details in the typeface, mainly the anatomical features in letter forms. Then compare and contrast these features with other typefaces to determine what makes one more legible than the other. So all of these things combined make up the appearance of a typeface. The most legible typefaces tend to be those with generous X heights and larger open or closed inner spaces. And if it's a serif typeface, it will have well-formed serifs. Next, we'll need to find out if the typeface can do the job. Consider all the font variants. Can it emphasize, italicize, and quote things well? Is there enough difference in the bold and regular weights to create contrast? Does it include the ligatures or even true small caps? We also need to make sure that the font is legible at smaller and larger sizes, as well as in darker or lighter shades of color. If numbers are an important part of the content, how do they look? Some typefaces used old style figures or lowercase numbers. Lining figures are a modern figure which do not use lowercase descenders. They're uniform in width and height and are great for tabular data and charts, as you can see here in the dates on this page. If the design features a lot of numbers, the old style figures might be more pleasant. This is the more elegant of the two and seems to blend in best because their heights and widths vary. So here, notice the use of old style figures and the numbers. Another thing to consider is cost, as certain fonts can be pricey but some of the free typefaces may not have all the font features you need. So make sure the one you choose, if free, has the features you want in your design. A lot of the times we probably won't get 100% exactly what we're looking for in a font. So we'll need to balance the text needs. Choosing two typefaces to work well together requires double the attention to details. When using two typefaces, they'll need to have the right balance. Neither font should dominate the other. For example, in Jason Santa Maria's site, the body text is set in a serif typeface of Shapiro Pro, while the headings are a bolder sans serif Proxima Nova, which look really great together. 
Jessica Hitch site is a traditional typographic masterpiece. The main headings are set in Whitney, while the logo and subheadings are set in Mercury small caps below a smaller italicized lowercase version of Mercury. And the body text beautifully combines both small caps and lowercase text. The rules aren't really set in stone, but there seems to be a misconception that when using two fonts, the headline should be sans serif and the text in serif, or vice versa. While it's a classic combination of typefaces and contrast in letter forms is important, it's not always necessary. But putting typefaces together of the same classification may create an unnecessary clash and tension. Conversely, if they have nothing in common, it can feel like they just don't belong together at all. For example, unless they're inherently different, pairing two similar typefaces together, like I did here with Garamond and Sabin, can be a bit murky or unclear. Or like in the example below, if the two fonts are completely different, with nothing in common, like Kevlar and Scholar, the typefaces just don't seem to be in accordance with each other. Consider their X heights, shapes, styles, and serifs. If a lot of those features and characteristics are the same, then they're probably too similar. And if none are the same, they're too different. As I mentioned earlier, typefaces have a voice that carries a certain mood and personality. Pairing up typefaces with poorly mixed moods can also draw attention to the typography instead of the message, which can result in a poor design. So here, I've used Droid Serif for the headings and Droid Sans for the body text. Both have similar X heights, letter shapes, and have concordance, so they pair up well. Another great example, the blog at viljamis.com uses an uppercase Trump Gothic East typeface for the headings, while the body text set in PT Sans complements it nicely. If you're not comfortable using two typefaces just yet, or feel like the design doesn't call for it, there are still many ways contrast can be created with only one typeface, using font size, color, weight, placement, and case. If the typeface is versatile, we can use different fonts from the same typeface. For example, Information Architects uses the same typeface throughout their site. The headings are slightly larger and italicized, while the section titles are set to the small caps font. Their logo, however, uses a bold Helvetica New, which gives the page a balanced contrast. This is a great example of how we don't always need to use more than one or two typefaces in our designs. In fact, constraining ourselves to just one or two will make us focus more on the actual typesetting details. So our typefaces are legible, have balance, and describe the right mood. But is our text readable? Coming up in the next video, we'll learn how to establish visual order with vertical spacing, line length, and understanding similarity and proximity concepts for grouping text.